Greetings, listeners. I am your host for the evening, Zach Barrett, and welcome to this Twisted Gear Studios production. You are about to listen to The Call, our Call of Cthulhu actual playcast GM'd by Derek Snow. The previous report from our investigators. After their shared dream in the hedge maze, the team is more on edge than ever. Althea is even more confirmed in her suspicions of the supernatural connection between Amos and Simon. The team now head for the address that was in Albert Gall's journal. Okay, so, uh, as we start with this episode, uh, what did you all want to do? Well, I have gone and grabbed all of my stuff, including my Lee Enfield, in preparation to go to this mysterious address that Marion has suggested that we go to. And you put the gun in the trunk, and you don't take it out in public. No. Oh, what that's not how that? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're falling into my problems. <laughs> mm. um, okay, so uh, Agatha, of course, is probably in the main foyer, ready to leave yep. with everything that she has. Include my Leanne Field strapped to my back. Um, Marion? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get us together some bagged lunch, and then I'm going to go look for... Um, uh, Althea and uh, Amos. I yeah, can just, we don't know what's happening right now. No, you don't. <laughs> I could probably say that Althea and Amos are probably leaving the lab at this point. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you just run in, uh, Mary, and you run into them in the hallway just as they come out of the Althea, lab. Amos, uh, I, I managed to look up that address from the from Albert Scald's book. At the moment, it's really our only lead, and I was hoping we could head there this afternoon. I picked up some lunch, and I hold the bags. Well, that's, that's, yeah, right. that sounds about fair. How do we feel about stopping by my apartment on the way? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yes, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'll just, um, go and, I'm still wearing the apron. <laughs> um, I'll just go and get rid of this and get a jacket or whatever. Yeah, unless, unless you, hmm, you did say that you have photo development tools here, correct? I do, yes. Well, how long until we all leave? We can leave whenever. As you know, you look down the hallway and you can see Agatha just. I'm, pro- I'm like, I'm probably tapping my foot, being like, "Mangas, let's let's go. <laughs> let's do a thing. Let's do a thing." You got a gun on your back. Yeah. Al- Althea, wouldn't there's Agatha? Sorry, wouldn't that be better stashed in the trunk? Yeah, but I have to get it from here to the trunk. So... I gotta teach you how to use a handgun. Nah. Yeah? Nah. This yeah. this is my trusty this this is my trusty Kathleen stays with me. You've named it. Um <laughs> Um, I would like to point out that we're gonna be getting into my car with my license plate on it. We're also going into a heavily populated commercial part of Boston. Learn I'm a going, handgun. I don't I don't think there'll be even an opportunity to take it out. You never know. I do. My vehicle, my house, it's not leaving the trunk. Or you're not going. I'm driving, after all. Or bring a blanket. And wrap it in a blanket. Fine, I'll do that. And only take it out of the trunk if we fucking need it. Hmm. And only if... And when you bring it out, See, you that's bring the problem, it out though. With you don't know if. You never know if. So far, we've gone into churches that we never know if we needed it. Yeah, but and it was fine. You brought it, it in. There was no so residential areas. I'm just going to, from point A to point B to the car, I will cover it with a blanket. But when we get to said destination, I am taking it out of trunk in blanket. Yeah, the, you got to do that. Okay, there was only one residential area that we've been in. And it was the one residential area you brought the gun out and the cops were called. Hence blanket now. Well, yeah, so bring a blanket. Blankets solve all problems. Mm-hmm. Most problems. I always have a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> always know always have a towel is. is. <laughs> now wrap it up make it look like it's a rug. All right. As far as the extent of that argument I'm going to have. Okay, so... Everyone good to go? I'm going to throw my camera on, my Kona hat on. Yeah, I'll just throw my apron away and put on a... Yeah, yeah. One of the... Faceless servants grabs it and yeah. I say thank you. Yeah, I just hold it out and it disappears. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I reach out to a faceless, nameless stu- uh, servant. What's your name? Hmm? 
Just, just whatever random nameless servant comes up and hands Mary and her stuff. What's your name? No, takes off the apron. Takes off the apron. What, what, what's your name? Okay, so what happens is, um, <laughs> as you, as Althea, you take off the apron, and a nameless, faceless servant uh, comes up and takes the apron, and Amos, you reach out your hand yeah. and says, well, what's your name? And the individual uh, completely ignores you, turns around and walks away with the apron. Amos, you haven't learned the names of my staff yet? You've been here for two weeks. Do you know the names of your staff? Of course I do, and I finished putting my coat on. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't answer my question. Let's, what was the name of that one? Let's go to the garage, all right? I have to make sure I take Bob, the right car. Bob, I'm calling car. them Bob. From now on, sure. I'm calling that particular one Bob. His name Amos. isn't Bob. All right, I have to make sure that I take the right car as well. The padded Bob's car. Bob's car. Make sure to take Bob's car. Bob I, I like Bob's work. Bob doesn't have a car. Bob, I'm Bob sure clean one of these cards. Bob cars. doesn't need Whichever a car. one he last touched. I like Bob. Bob's cool. And you guys think I'm going crazy. So I can't Did say I leave? That. <laughs> I say that her. knowing full well that the guy that runs the newsstand by my apartment is also named Bob. I'm not very imaginative. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very common name. <laughs> Let's be clear. It's short for Robert. <laughs> Tony. I'm calling him Tony. Tony, I want Tony's car. Oh my goodness. You don't just get to pick their names. <laughs> <laughs> they have names, you monster. They didn't share them. Neither did Althea. You monster. They have He's work Kit to do. He's Kit Kat. <laughs> They're not they all named after chocolate Did you bars. say his name is Kit Kat? <laughs> Hershey. I'm not. Hershey? Okay, Kat. fair enough. Mr. Before, Big. Before, before this devolves. <laughs> oh, my God. Before this devolves. Butterfinger. Are you all... I said, shush, shush. He's wonderful. Could I have complete silence from the cast, please? Complete silence from the cast. We got the giggles before we die. Oh, it's always God. good to be in a good mood before you go to your death. Uh, it helps. Uh, I don't know it where helps. that rule comes it from. Helps. <laughs> it helps ease you into the process. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so you're all heading to the garage then, I'm assuming? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you all head outside, because it's easier the way the, the massive garage to the side of the house is set up under Skeet's supervision. Oh, um, and as you're walking on over, you do glance, especially Amos and Delphi, you glance over, and within the trees, it's really hard to pick out because it's not in the front but it's within the trees. You see what appears to be a structure built like a tree house, but more like a tree house on the hill in the tree. Huh. In the trees, yeah. Huh. It's fairly large. I mean, not as big as a normal house, but it's fairly large, yeah. Might just be bigger on the inside than it looks. I don't know. It's impossible to tell. It just looks quite nice. Why would you say it that way? Because <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. You know, it, uh, it's pretty nice, yeah. 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 As you move on to the garage. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, just parked outside of the garage is uh, the Packer Twin Six. Maybe I should just keep One calling it the car. The padded Packer. <laughs> Maybe we should keep calling it. I should start calling it the car, but I like saying Packer Twin Six. The armored one. The padded one? car. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. The, uh, the armored one is fine. <laughs> the armored Packer Twin Six. Um, you can all hop in. Um, I just want to know, not that it really matters. It might matter. Shotgun. Uh, okay. I'm in the back. Uh, <laughs> it's uncomfortable that you're calling it, that you're saying it that way. I'll sit in the back. <laughs> okay. So first I immediately, off. I immediately open the trunk, open it, stand there, and pointedly look at Agatha. Fine. I wrap up the gun with the blanket, and I'm like petting it. Kathleen. <laughs> okay, so the funny thing is something. As you open the trunk, Althea. There's someone in it. God damn it. <laughs> I Who did you put so in the trunk? cynical. <laughs> so cynical. This Everything's above board in this place. <laughs> but Althea, as you raise up the trunk, you don't look inside. You look over at Agatha and Agatha, you rolled up in a blanket, and as you're putting it in the trunk and you look in, you notice there are some things in the trunk. Like a Tommy gun. <laughs> is in the trunk. What? With the drum, the 50 round drum barrel lying next to it, upward. There is a machete. There is rope, um, like flashlight, stuff like that. Um, I look over from the side the like crowbar. comically and I'm like, holy shit. And you were worried about mine. 
Oh, Thea just looks into the in, trunk. In her defense, though, it's in her trunk where yours should be. Yeah. Also, you know exactly where you can put that? Right here. And I take the machete out. I'm like, it can go there. This isn't coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I put it on the bench. Did you just pull a machete out of the trunk? Did you notice there was a machete in the trunk? There's, There's more stuff in here, too. What? This oh is hardly God. the worst. Are there grenades in it, too? No, you don't really notice oh, any okay. grenades. <laughs> there's, a, there's, like, boxes and stuff in there, too. The trunk isn't full, but it has, uh, seems like supplies and stuff like that. What Col- were you, what Colt were 45 you armor ammo? Hmm? Colt 45 ammo? You don't see one, obviously, like, just looking in. Remind me when we get back to have a chat with the person who's been taking care of this car. And I just close the trunk and I go walk over to the driver's side. (laughs) Yeah, you have to have a chat with him. Tell him he's doing an amazing fucking job and to keep it up. And I'll have to remember to include Cadbury because I don't ever remember me from, oh, not an Uzi. What is it called? Tommy gun. Tommy gun. I didn't say don't bring your gun. Uh, I said put it in the trunk with the Tommy gun. I also have to include Cadbury And if you take the Tommy gun out, you're going to wrap it in a fucking blanket. We shouldn't even bring that. I don't remember no, purchasing. Out of the trunk. I don't remember purchasing a Tommy gun, and I just get into the driver's side of the car. I'm still standing by the trunk. Are we sure we should? Bring- I'm gonna go into the car. <laughs> Let's not open the trunk in public. And no, tr- we shouldn't open the trunk in public. Well, how am I gonna get my gun? Is it wrapped in a blanket? You are this close to no longer being a guest in my house. Like this fucking close. <laughs> This close. <laughs> it's actually probably Jesus. like my thumb is up here and my forefinger is actually past it. This is how far you are from not being a guest at my house anymore. I didn't say don't bring the fucking gun. I said wrap it in a goddamn blanket. You said don't bring the gun and then there's a Tommy gun, we which we should guy? wrap in a blanket. No, no, you're still outside by the No, trip. I got in the car. Oh, you got yeah, in? Yeah, I got there. Has everyone gotten in at this point? I yes. wrapped the Tommy gun in a blanket and then I get in the car. Yes. Good. Oh, <laughs> if you already opened the trunk. We should not bring the Tommy gun. I thought you'd slam the trunk shield closed. Fuck no, we're bringing the Tommy gun we, and the Lee We need a Tommy gun. Always. Where were you the last time we went out of this house? There was we're, fi- we're facing one or two individuals at a time. That were all crazy. Cra- the very, the level We've been of Tommy crazy. gunned I'm in already, residential street. I'm already pulling out. I'm in the ah! car. <laughs> Both okay. guns are covered in a blanket. I would like it to be noted for the record. For the record, okay. For the record, they are wrapped in blankets. Hold on, let me, let me put it into the For the, the record, record, the Lee Enfield. They're both wrapped and up. And the Tommy gun the that I don't remember paying for. But the uh, there's a lot of trunk. stuff around you don't remember paying for. Yes, <laughs> but usually I remember, you know, weapon. You don't even know who maintains the hedge. Anyway. <laughs> That's so true. The ominous monsters that live inside and maintain the hedge. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Stop <laughs> drinking immediately before people talk. Oh, yeah, you're all talking all the time. Uh. So you're all in the Packard 26. <laughs> yes. This all started with me saying maybe I should just start calling it a car. Nope. <laughs> Packard 26. Yeah. Um, We're in the Packard Packard, and I'm pulling away. Where are you driving to? I'm taking instructions from Marion. Yep. I'm heading directing towards your, downtown. Directing her to that More address that. that I looked up. Fair enough. Oh, no. We need to go to Amos's apartment first. So Amos is guiding me first, and then after that, Marion will be. <laughs> Knowing the destination where we're headed, how far out of the way is it to get to my apartment? Eh, around 20 minutes, 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Should have known that was what the answer was going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the natures of large cities. All right. Uh, I mean, we've got extra ammo there. I can restock what I've yeah, spent. You do. Uh, do we need to take a detour to my place no. to get f- f- photo equipment if you have photo equipment? It's up to you. I just I agreed earlier that I would go to your apartment so you could do that. If you want to change your mind. I've still got cigarettes. I've still got bullets. You've got camera equipment, and I've and I've seen her camera. Like I can I can develop photos at her place. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. Let's just go right there. Yeah. There's I love no how need. you put the cigarettes before the bullets as a need. Yeah. Do you know how stressed <laughs> I've been? I'm apparently mm-hmm, to some... Anyway, I need You're stress what? relief. <laughs> <Yes>. Preach it. <laughs> All right, so I'm taking instructions from Marion then and driving towards said address from said creepy book. I'm, I'm sitting slightly further away from Amos than I normally would be. <laughs> I look at you blankly and awkwardly and then I slowly <laughs> light up a cigarette. Oh, that's not my problem. 
driving to said address. Okay. You are driving to said address. Yeah. It's the 20s. You can smoke all you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're There's still into around. opium right now. We don't know anything about tobacco. Would you like some heroin? <laughs> Pain in the foot? Heroin. <laughs> <laughs> you have syphilis. You should just go cocaine about that. <laughs> Actually, I, I mean, mean, I think we've already all had cocaine. We had a shared dream. As you are pulling toward, takes around 20, 30 minutes. As you are pulling to the down to the area where the address should be, or as Marion knows, the lack or just mm-hmm. a block. Um, you drive oh, by all the weird. a lot of storefronts and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. A lot of people walking around. Um, as you go down so far. And you know it's maybe just a hundred meters up on the right that it's supposed to be. But you notice that there is a crosswalk somewhat. 20s version. There is an area where people generally cross the road. And you notice that, um, and then as you're coming up to and further down, you notice that a lot of people, or you see some people crossing the crosswalk to the side of the street opposite the address walking down and then cross back mm. they go forward because as soon as you hit within this I don't know, 50 meter area there is like nobody walking the street there okay as very strangely as you pull I'm assuming you pull up to the curb mm-hmm. um, don't really know why we wouldn't no, I would exactly uh, you notice what appears to be a small uh, bungalow Seems to be made out of brick. Um, it seems to be completely like there's office buildings and storefronts on either side of it. It seems like it's a weird place for a house to be. Is my point. It's like the, the city kept building around it and yes. then ignored it. Yeah, it seems to be almost sunken in the shadows of these office buildings. You don't even really pick it out at first. They really pull up to it. Um, it looks almost identical to the sketch. That was in uh, Albert's journal. Um, yeah, just a small, seems to be two-story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Small brick bungalow. Hmm. It just seems really out of the ordinary, and you've known that you've traveled up and down the street before and you've never seen it. Sort of that feeling that, like, even more so than the Chapel of Contemplation. Because that is a bit further out in the industrial area, so you mightn't have traveled that as often. It's walled. It's understandable where that could be missed. I mean, it's amazing in the towns you live in or the cities you live in, the areas that sort of just get overlooked. Um, But this is really strange to all four of you, especially with the things you've experienced so far. Um, As you all know, you've traveled up and down these roads multiple times, and you've never noticed this house, this bungalow. Huh. Mm-hmm. As you're just pulled up on the curb right now, so what would you like to do? You said Gaul wrote this, eh? We can get out of the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was in his. It was the only thing readable, really, in his journal. Okay. And no one's walking around this place. No. Like as you look up the street, you notice that there's just a couple of people like walking. Um, as you get to the office buildings, you know what I mean, that are sort of shadowing, that yeah. are causing the shadow of the house in between them, that there's a crosswalk sort of in, in, in front of each of those buildings, and anyone who's walking down crosses over, walks across, and okay. crosses back. Mm-hmm. And it almost seems like um, there's no thought in it. Is anyone aware that, yeah, our, I was that we're ask, here? Is yeah, anybody no, looking at the house when no, they're doing this? No, nobody okay. is, yeah. Here's my recommendation. I'm going to take a picture of the front of the house uh, so we can add that to the pile later. Um, anything that's wrapped in a blanket uh, or rug in the trunk of the car, when she's just thinking over our shoulders. Like we're, we're not bringing the Tommy guy. Like we're house repair people. You said Gall wrote this in his house, or in his, in his uh, book? This is, well, it's, yeah. It was in it's Gall's his, book? It's his journal, yeah. It's likely that he's going to be here. That's, that is a chance. So we're going to bring the bundles, make it look like that uh, they're carpets that we're going in as 
uh, house repair people. Yeah, okay. In case anyone's looking in our direction. Once we're in, then we can uh, unveil, as it were. Uh, bring your handgun. Have it at the ready. No, that was Bring your Lee Enfield. Anyway. Absolutely have it ready. Which leaves the Tommy gun to myself or Althea, and given our levels of experience, we are as No, please leave that in the car. Thank you. I grab a crowbar. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Too bad we don't have a machete. Uh, listen, our experience okay. with machetes is not super great. Explosive, <laughs> actually, to a point. Some would say that machetes can be quite explosive. What? Uh, anything else of interest in the trunk? Uh, did flashlight. you flashlight. Want... Yes, there is a flashlight. And rope. I will and take there those. is rope. I'll take those. Okay, Rocco. Fair enough. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, references. Here's your fucking rope. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you want to spend time searching through some of the boxes and stuff in the trunk? I'll take a little bit of time. Okay. Um, yeah, because uh, I want to make sure there's also ammunition for mine as well. We'll just see what's in them. Okay, uh, specifically what would you Oh, no, yeah, I would have brought my own ammunition. Never mind, sorry. Is there anything in specific that you'd be wondering if it's there? I don't even know. I mean, the only thing I can think of, I have tons of bullets, but if there's Colt 45 ammo, it would be the big one, but I can't think. What would what would I want to look for? Oh, um, Flares. 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 You yeah, set the flares. place on fire. Like fair. like when fair we enough. were like we were in the in Luck the hedge roll. maze. Look roll. And you wanted ammo for your Lee Enfield? No, I would have actually packed it when I grabbed all my stuff. Sure. That would make sense. But um is there anything like you said you grabbed a crowbar? Because mm-hmm. he'd said he'd said uh, at the beginning when we 16, first opened the, the trunk that there was a crowbar there, so I grabbed it. Sixty eight out of fifty three, so no. Uh no, there is no flares. Yeah, I'm sure surprisingly, fine. surprisingly. Uh, handcuffs. Handcuffs. Hmm. Luck roll. In case you want to apprehend him. No, <laughs> I'm shooting him. You need a hard success on a luck roll. Oh shit. Oh, because it'd be weird for Skeet to put handcuffs in the trunk. Not weird for a Tommy gun. Uh, but, I suppose. But weird for. <laughs> 36 out of 53 is not a hard success. So, no. So. Oh. No. Uh, knife. Something to strap on. Yeah, can if he, uh, is that like a hunting knife? Straight yeah. up luck. A can if he. Yeah, we're fine. 46 out of 75. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you do find like a hunting knife. And I'm going to put that in my pocket. In your pocket. Well, it's it's set up for like a belt. So you just want to oh, slide it in I'll your pocket set. or just put it on your belt? I'll oh, put it on my belt. Yeah, because I know you usually describe that you're wearing... Pants with a belt, yes. Yeah, so you could just slot it on so it's on your side. Yep. All right, ladies, I think we're good. Um, I just want to know, like, weapons-wise? Good God. Marion, do you have a crowbar? I have a crowbar. I'm assuming you don't carry anything. Your words? <laughs> um, Wait, do you have your satchel? I have my satchel. Yeah. It forensics has notebooks bag. and pens. Oh, you have your forensics bag, yep. Althea? Um, um, if I can take one, I will. I'll you put can. the I'll put the rope inside it because you know I don't have three hands. Yes, that or I'm aware of. Or you throw it over your shoulder. It's up to you. No, whichever. Okay, works. doesn't matter. I will throw the Tommy gun over my shoulder. No, you don't. You are you are as likely to hit Didn't one you of just us. Just say as to I leave am. that in the car. Yeah. I just had a and did you cover it with a blanket? Um, yes, also, actually, I was the only one that did. Also. That's mm-hmm. my Tommy gun. Too, no, no one else covered. I mean, no one Amos. bothered to cover the, the, the Tommy gun. You can't gun. So can aim Tommy with gun. that. You can aim with a, with a handgun. My character sheet says I can. <laughs> the fact that I own the Tommy gun. I mean, I'm going to use oh. the handgun before oh, okay. I use the Tommy gun. Maybe Althea could take it. No, no, I'm, no. Not, I'm not taking it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I will throw the Tommy gun back in the car and will close the trunk. If we That's a mistake, and it's great. <laughs> I'll put the Tommy gun over my shoulder. No, no, you put it in the trunk and you close it. It's gone. Weapons check, people. Uh Amos, you have your handgun. You fucked up. You have your handgun? You put it in there and lock it's closed. You have your handgun on you right now. I do, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so handgun. 
Um, if I need the Tommy gun and when Agatha, we're in there, I have my. I so I will have my God. land field. And with, you have a hunting I'm never And I have a hunting knife, again. and I do have some ammo on me. Yes, of course. And Althea, you have your forensics <laughs> bag and sparkling wit. Uh, <laughs> I have my forensics bag, rope, and a flashlight. Okay, rope and a flashlight takes the place of wit. Yeah. Done. <laughs> hey, so are you all going to start heading toward? Wait, hang on. So we got Tommy gun last time, right? No, you put it in the car. It's Go gone. back to Tommy gun. No, what? no, it's gone. You've you've messed up. You fucked up. People. You People. fucked up. <laughs> Technically, I'm the one who said it was mine. So I run back to the. <laughs> <laughs> We're all standing on the porch. What? And I go up oh and then. Oh, so you do go. I go over the Tommy gun. It's over my shoulder. It's wrapped in a blanket, and I go in the house uh, or go up to the front with these guys. Is anyone else seeing anything? Do you notice anything weird about the house? Well, now that we're standing on the front step. No, kidding. no, you're not at the front step. You're all heading <laughs> toward the oh, house. I'm just gonna say, if Amos ends up killing me with my own Tommy gun. Agatha, you can shoot me right back. It's fine. You can't stay in my house anymore. <laughs> hmm? If he shoots me with my own Tommy gun, you can't stay in my house. Why me? Because you're the one who told him he fucked up. <laughs> That's true. Is that Anything that happens with the Tommy gun is now I'm I get this. Sorry. <laughs> the higher presence. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm perfectly okay with it being kept there. It doesn't affect me. Uh, one of us is going to get shot. Oh yes. Yeah. Can I roll a spot hidden about this about the. Okay. Uh, so as you're walking up to <laughs> the did house. Did you ask for a spot hidden? Yes, uh, I did. No. Okay, well, you and I have already been shot. It's their turn now. Can I have silence from the cast, please? <laughs> as you're walking from the road onto the little path that leads yeah. up to the front door, and you all step onto the path, you all get a sinking, ominous feeling. We're going to get shot this by a Tommy something. gun. They get a sinking, ominous feeling. I feel great because I have a Tommy gun. Sorry, no. 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 Uh, it's just a sinking, ominous feeling. There's bad news similar to um, maybe when you, in Swill's Gullet, when you enter the catacombs, mm. you know, that type of fear. Oh, um, no. You know, certain things you've seen, certain things you've experienced have changed your view of the world a little bit. And you just get this, there's something wrong about this place. But Agatha specifically. Of course. Um, because every, the stuff that happens to you <laughs> seems to keep reoccurring to you. Yeah. As you're looking at the house and you can look up at the second floor, you remember when you looked at the mm. sketch of it and the way the curtain moved, you feel like you're being watched. And as you look up, it almost seems like a spot hidden roll is imminent. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, 97. Oh, that's fine. Out of 66. All you see is the curtain slightly moving in the middle of the room. Okay. <laughs> slightly moving. As if, you know, stuff. So. <laughs> a gust of wind in the house, of course, obviously. <laughs> yes, in this brick house. How, um... <laughs> Someone left the window open. It's drafty. How dilapidated is this house? Or does um, it look well kept? It does not really look well kept. You notice that the yard has grown up a bit and uh, stuff like that. Although, Marion, I know you did mention you wanted to make a spot hidden roll, and you can also go ahead right now Let's and make a spot take hidden a look roll. At this house. Yeah. 13 out of 43. Not you bad. can put a tick next to spot hidden. Oh, God. And. Um, it's not as much the house. The house is creepy. Just the way it, you just get this bad feeling from no. it. Although it just looks like a, a just a bungalow. Um, but what you do notice, even though the grass has grown up, you notice like black marks under the grass on the ground. And as you kick your foot out to look at it, it looks like slight scorch marks oh. where it was burnt somewhat but it seems weird because grass has grown up and is overshadowing it but there seems to be small burn marks overshadowed by do they grass. look like they're they're like in in streaks like they come from a, a burning building or they're random oh. um it doesn't seem it's like somebody started a little fire right here in this shape and then moved over here and there's a little fire here in this shape mm -hmm. and there's not like any definable shape to it but like little black marks on the ground and they're all over the place in the front oh. yeah Hmm. I, I point this out to everybody. Well, I thought. 
Then there's nothing to roll to see if there is some kind of connection between the burn marks? Um... No. There doesn't seem to be any connection with the burn Actually, natural world. Oh. That could make sense, right? Natural okay. world? Yes. Anyone who wants to make that 10%. 10%. Nope, 22 out of 10. 82 out of 10. That's not, that's a no. 86 out of 26 for all of you. Someone has, so, someone must have, have been here and... <laughs> and Zagula's probably. just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't know, it could be a sign of a troubled mind to light fires or... I don't know, maybe... Can I see if it's, f- like, freshly charred? The grass is growing up through it, you said. No, well, so. yeah, it's, it's around it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's, it seems a little bit strange how right. it's laid out. Um, you go down and you touch it, and you do get, like, a little bit of black soot on your hand, Amos. All right, so, so this it's happened. So it hasn't washed away <clears throat> or anything, and it's still a bit black here. So this happened. Who knows? Yeah. It's not, well, I mean, not forever. Ha- when, not when too last long ago. Yeah. And the shapes... Yeah. Like, do they look like a particular shape? No, or they, they don't really look like, like... They're not. I just mean they're not perfectly circle yeah, or anything, okay. but they're not all the same. It could be arson. Like, it's an old house. It's Is Gaul known to be an arson? No, no, mm. I'm just thinking, like, it's an abandoned house. You know, people are people. Oh, it's fair enough. House. I was just wondering if there was a connection. We're in between two office buildings. I'm going to look at the both buildings. Are there a sign of scorch marks on the walls? That is really interesting choice, and there are. You notice, as you look onto the office buildings to the side, um, there is, like, soot and scorch marks along both uh, mid to lower half of the building, as if there was a large fire here, although there is no sign here that there was a large fire. It seems like small fires, but it seems like there was quite a more drastic fire in this region, in, in this area, but there... The but the house soot, looks fine. The soot and marks on the office building signs do not really match up at all with how much these little scorch marks on the ground are. Did anybody do any research on this address? I just found it. I looked up where the address was. On the house Yeah, it's... you didn't find any records either. I mean, you mm-hmm. were looking up the address. Yeah. On the house itself, like, there's no... You said it was dilapidated, but is, like, the windows broken? No, no. the windows are not broken. I mean, it's, it's not like dilapidated. I, I it asked seems if it a bit, was, and he said it wasn't. Yeah, it seems to be. It looks to be a bit run down. Like, I mean, the yard isn't kept up. I mean, there's fading on everything. Uh, you know what I mean? Right, but there's no damage to it. It just looks like it's not just old. Not really that you can tell. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So let's get on the same page here. Uh, it, it's. Am I correct in assuming that we're all under the impression that Gaul is in this house? It would be best to assume that, yes. Mm-hmm. So then, are we going in with the intention of apprehending him? Seeing what he has to do with the Church of Contemplation? We still never did get that tome. Maybe he somehow has connections as to where to find the tome. It would be best if we could ask him questions. Mm. Okay. But <clears throat> I understand if he attacks us. Uh, self-defense comes first, obviously. but So we want to see what evidence there is in this house, whether that include or not include Gaul. Of course. All right. So we are in agreement with that. Um, we all need to be prepared that the nest that he had at the top of the Church of Contemplation, he may have something similar here as well. It was a very vile sight. I have not been able to show you the photos yet. But as best as humanly possible, be aware that you will not be prepared if there is one such as that in here. All right. All right. So, we're looking for clues, we're looking for gall, either to ask him questions or protect ourselves. Anything else that we're aiming to do? And if we don't find any of these targets, we leave? I guess so. Try to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Voice of God laughs. Uh, All right. Yeah. Front door. All right. Okay, so everyone is uh, okay so. now. Everyone walks on up to the front door. Who is leading? I guess me. Amos, as you walk on up to the steps. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be like a little, um, 
like a little deck in front. You know what I mean? Not really a deck, but like the porch is yeah. a bit wider on the front. Draw the handgun, but keep it kind of like relatively mm-hmm. covered from behind me in front. And uh, do I see any runes or anything on the door as that's becoming a common thread that we've been running into? No. No, no it just looks like a normal door, yeah. Um, Am I going to knock? Am I going to open the door? Yep. Yeah, so as you walk up the steps and yeah. you step on the steps, uh, there's a creak as the wood seems to be resisting. You know what I mean? It yeah. seemed, it's not been upkept, uh, so you wouldn't really trust jumping up and down on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're going up to the door, and I don't even require a spot hidden for this. The first thing you notice is there's um, four deadbolts on the outside oh, what? of the door <laughs> that are closed into, you know, the, um, the slots that are screwed yeah, in yeah, yeah, for yeah. it to slot into. It's locked from the outside. Well... All right, well, then let's go home. Uh. Uh, so, okay. Uh, that's... I'm... Now I'm not sure anymore. Is there, are there windows in the front? I was going to ask the same thing. There seems to be um, the way the the porch goes across, like, like a deck you see in yeah. most homes, right? Yeah. Um, goes across that there seems to be a window... Um, to the right of the door, to the right of the house. Although, even looking over, it seems to be blackened or something on the inside. So, even as you're glancing over, you can tell you can't see through it. Are we prepared to proceed? No. Um, dun, 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 dun. So, we've been dealing with interesting ways to... Has the, the new... Having worked at the New England Center of Antiquities, Marion, do you know of any things that, any unique methods of locking something up? Uh, you have runes on doors that apparently do things. There's, there's some, do these burn marks match any kind of those marks like you've had on the cellar door at the New England Center of Antiquities? No, we wouldn't use fire for, fire's cleansing, you wouldn't use it for locking. Oh, fire is <clears throat> cleansing. Mm. Yeah. Yes. That's this. Althea knows this from for. You would use fire to sterilize surgical equipment. Fire is is for. It, it's 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 for for scouring for for removing. Okay. You can lock with fire. I'm gonna go back into the yard and I want to look. I want to do a spot hit and check on all the windows upstairs. Before I okay, start unlocking front. The yeah. front door, because you can't. We, you said we can't see anything through the windows on the ground floor, correct? Yeah. Well, this is just from the front. Yeah, just from the of front. The house. You can go around. Oh, there's. The you can, we can go, you to can the go sides. around the house. Okay. Before I begin that, I'm gonna look at the upstairs front upstairs windows. Sixty-seven out of fifty-one. <laughs> yeah, windows. All right, sweet. Cur- um, curtains drawn. There seems to be no windows or ways that people can look down at the yard that we're in. Uh, so. Actually, no. No, as you look up and you can see uh, the windows up there. Now, they don't look to be... You can see the curtains, so they don't look like blacked. But they're up on the second story. Yeah. I mean, like the office buildings. There's no way people can No, look you notice that doing. both sides of the office building is just flat wall. All the way up, both of them. It's like they don't want to see the house. <laughs> don't see that. Did you want to check to see if there was a back door that maybe wasn't locked? I think we should. Uh, Agatha? Mm hmm. I think it's time to unblanket the gun. Oh, you're giving me permission, are we? There's no people around. Look at the office buildings. There's no windows. Yeah, but we are still facing the street. Maybe wait till we're on the back of the house. Yeah. All right, then I'll go first. I'd be happy to do it now, but considering, like, that, that would now be you giving me permission to do the mistake that you told me not to do. I thought no one was watching. If people are watching, <laughs> don't fucking do it. Let's go around inside the house with my handgun. I will have uh, Kathleen in the blanket ready to unsheath her when we get to the back of the house. That's all we need is cops coming. <laughs> okay. 
Um, would you like to go around the right side of the house or the left side of the house, or would you like to split up and take sides? Where, each? Just, no one suggests splitting up. Okay, so right or left hand side of the house. Which one are we going? Flip a coin. Evens left, odds right. Left. Okay, so you all sort of, and it's tall grass. <laughs> you go along and you all start walking around um, the <clears throat> side of the house. Okay. Um, as you're looking down here, this this side of the house, um, you don't notice there's no windows on this side of the house. But you notice that as you're getting to the back of the house, as you're walking and you're looking, and it seems dark here because the way the buildings take away the sun. As you're walking there and you're in sort of like a tunnel is what it feels like. Um, well, there goes the advantage of coming here during the day. You... <laughs> You do notice uh, a door, like a side door, oh. on the back side of the house. But like, it seems to be like a little concrete slab on it, not stairs, like a small concrete slab. There is as like a step yeah. as you're walking there. Yeah. Go up to it. Does it have locks on it? Uh, yes, there are four locks, mm. four deadbolts locked from the outside. Any windows back here? There is no windows on this side of the house, but as you look back, you can see the backyard, mm. which is completely overgrown. There's a couple of trees in here as well, and it's really dark, and it, you, you see what almost appears to be a small shed, maybe 15, 20 feet behind the house within the shade of the trees with grass and stuff growing up all around it. But that's just from this angle. You haven't seen the back of the house yet. You're looking into the backyard from the left-hand side of the I house. I head to the back of the house. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll all go with her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you notice that there are no windows, really, on the back side of the house. Actually, that is wrong. There is one window, sorry, um, sort of centered on the top floor, um, like a small... It's not even as much of a window. That's why you didn't really notice it, because I didn't forget. I really didn't forget. There was a small, <laughs> there was a small like square window, like you'd see from an attic, mm -hmm. that's way up at the top mm. of the house. Um, but there is nothing else behind, except you can see. It seems a fairly large backyard here. Um, it's really all grown over trees and everything, and you can see what seems to be like a small shed. Um, in the back, tucked into the trees. I'm gonna wander up and take a look at that shed. Okay, so is everyone going to the shed? We are traveling like a pack right now. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, do... is there a back door? No, there's no, a side door. Just the side door. Like that's right at the back of the house, but there is no door on the back of the house. Uh, I'll spot hidden that top window. To see if you spot anything out of see the ordinary. See if there's anything that's okay. poking out. <laughs> 69 out of 51. It's a window. <laughs> it's a window. It's like a small attic window, you know, sometimes just meant for light to get in. All right. Mm -hmm. To the shed with us, it looks like. Oh, All right, it's back. Let's take a look. Okay, so you go back, and it seems to be a small shed, maybe. You know, it's only like six by six. Um, has like a double wooden plywood type of door, Open like it. like nothing really fancy. Um, doesn't appear to be locked, although there is a loop, and there seems to be like a railroad spike mm -hmm. in through the loop, and that seems it's not locked, but yeah, that seems that is what's keeping the little doors odd. closed. Uh, yeah. listen check to hear if anything's inside. Make a listen check, Amos. I know, I don't want to open a door and have something shoot me. Althea is being quite quiet. I think she's just sticking in the back. She's got some thoughts on the situation. 22 out of 63. Okay, you put a tick next to listen. I um, already. As you're listening, you almost hear what sounds like water. Like dripping water. That's what you hear. Oh, I think I know what's in here. Alright, are we ready to pop this thing open? No, but do it anyway. Yes. I will have my leaf in Enfield at the ready. I was going to say, there's no people back here. There's no windows on the other buildings. I'm assuming this is like enclosed by other buildings. Yeah, the office buildings. And there is no windows on anything facing this house. 
This is fucking weird. Yeah. 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 All right, get ready to shoot something. Are you ready? <laughs> so I, right. I'm going to, I'll open the door and okay. you have your gun ready. Uh, I, I also have pull the railroad spike and push the door open and back up. Okay. So as you grab the railroad spike and you start pulling it out, I need Marion to make a willpower check. <gasps> what? As soon as she grabs the railroad spike. 41 out of 65. Yeah, just as you grab it, you just have this quick thought of, where did this come from? What what part of the railroad was it once in and all this stuff? But it seems to be like these images flowing through your mind and stuff like that. It's just really weird. Even just for a split second, then you're like, it's just a railroad spike. <laughs> and you uh, take it out. Yeah, it's just this weird flash of images as... You um, take it out and open the door. Um, first thing that hits you all is a smell. Oh, God. That oh. requires a constitution check by everybody. Oh, God. Constitution checks all around, people. <laughs> Double zero. Great job, Agatha. I'm sick, too. Just 56 out of 75. <laughs> What'd you get? One. One oh, percent. One hundred. On your yeah, you had a hundred percent. Yeah, you had a one hundred and a one. Yeah, that's statistics. Awesome. Sixty nine out of fifty five for all of you. <laughs> okay, so what happens is um, Althea. The smell just assaults your senses for a second, and you sort of just, you know, step back a little bit, and it's uh, it smells like a chemical very chemical smell okay um and although agatha you immediately maybe it's from the hangover the previous night <laughs> as it hits you you take a step back and start throwing up yep. it just rises up and <laughs> i don't know if that's how people sound when they throw up i'm assuming it's more like i'll never drink again <laughs> Um, yeah, but you step back, sort of fall to your knees and start throwing up. Vomiting, yeah. And Amos and Marion, you both succeeded. Yeah, Amos quite significantly succeeded. So, uh, Marion, you feel, oh, yeah, that's a bad smell. Amos, you're just like, man, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but it seems to be um, that there's a large, like a drum in the middle of the room. So, you know, on a container drum. Um, and it's, it's quite big. It mostly takes up like half the shed. And you can see some tools and stuff around, but nothing really. But there's a large drum in there. And there seems to be like a chemistry, like a flasks and stuff up top to catch, I don't know, you can only assume it's rainwater, but there's liquid in them and they're dripping and to the opening of the top of this drum. And it's that drip sound you heard. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's a fairly large drum, so, you know. You can't see what's inside the drum? Did you want to go inside and try to look inside the drum? The drum is around five feet high. Is there a stepladder around it? No. Any cinder blocks or anything outside in the yard I can use as like a step up? A oh, luck roll. It's one of those things. If there's something, yeah, let's see if there's something. Twenty-five out of fifty-three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, off to the just off to the side, you can see what appears to be like a small, like a cinder block. Okay. just because you know, in these old places, there's always yeah. cinder blocks there's just all, yeah. lying around from the Piles foundation. Brick. So I yeah, let's just it. say that not a cinder block, bricks. There's some piles of bricks, so I yeah. create a step for myself. I yeah, go. so you take some bricks. Take a look in. All right. So first off, as you set it up and get up on the bricks, the smell is like really strong. I'm gonna take my shirt. I'm gonna do this. Still have the gun out, and I'm gonna take a look in. Okay, so you sort of lean over yeah. and you you look in, and it's not. Um, even though what's dripping down seems to be clear, like water, whatever's in this is not. Um, so you can't really see it. It just seems like black. Right? 
like almost like oily consistency. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm gonna take a nearby twig. A <laughs> nearby twig. <laughs> I'm assuming that there's sticks around. Yes, I'm okay with there a stick being around. I did say there was trees. Okay. Uh, oh god. Um. Just give me a minute, guys. And I and I got out. I dipped the stick in. Okay, so a couple things happen. <gasps> you need to know what you're doing. So you take the twig, I mean, kind the of. stick, and you get up on the bricks, and you dunk it in, and it, it goes in like it's water. You know what I mean? There isn't, you know, it just flows in. And as you take it out, you notice that there's black up the twig up to where you put it in. Um, and then immediately the black starts moving up the twig towards your hand. I dropped the twig in the back. Okay, dexterity check to see if you beat it before it gets to you. Oh, that's not, that's not 215 out of... Yeah, I don't have less than 50. 45! That is a hard <laughs> success. Yeah, so you manage to just... as It seems Jesus. to you like it's shooting up it. Yep. You uh, drop the twig, got a call for Sandy check as well. This is something completely out of the normal. Six percent. Yeah, so, uh, no. I was rolling bad earlier, I'm rolling good now. Yeah, it seems maybe, um, this is, this is quite possible, depending on the liquid. I mean, it's not really, but you're not sure what it is, but still creeped you out a little. Just that quick, it seems. Ah, what the fuck? What is it? Uh, would I, would it be realistic to assume and compare it to the black liquid that we found in Swell's Gullet? It could seem familiar, but without a sample, you're not entirely sure because it's in a different uh, container type of thing. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know. It just looks like he, they're, he's making something. It just For a second, it looked like the black liquid was coming up the stick. Oh. Uh, it's, but it's just, it's just some black liquid? It's just really foul-smelling oil. Yeah, oh, it's, quite, it's quite rancid. I, You're I, still throwing up. Like it's I, I, I kind of take a glance at Agatha and, and, and then say, I, I think we're better off closing the door on this until we learn more. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. Exactly. Alright. Close it. Put the spike back. Yeah. Spike back in. Agatha, you've been like to the point where you're throwing up bile. As soon as they close the door, though, the smell sort of dissipates. You sort of you, uh, catch yourself. You're doing all right there. Though. Oh. oh, I'll take that as a note. We might have water back in the car from the lunches, if there's any left. I'm assuming we ate on the drive. Do you want? Do you want to take a break, or should we continue? No, just continue. Let's just get this over with. I think, uh, from what we've seen, we're best off opening the front door. Easiest, easiest means of escape if we need it, and... Yeah, also for Albert, though. And whatever locked that... Let's let's head back to the front. Let's take the opposite side of the house. And then... Do we really want to go into a house that's locked from the outside? If Albert's in there, someone locked him in. Or... Yeah, but or, at least... The, for, then how did he... Like, who, who would just leave a madman in a house? Or... There's also a chance that he's not here and he has somebody else locked inside. Or there's the sense. chance that he's not here and he has something else that he doesn't want us to find. People lock their valuables up. He's, you say he's, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, Agatha examined this, he's a madman. Who knows what he could consider valuable? It His could journal be could be considered yeah, but valuable. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense with the type of locks that are on the door. I mean, they're just deadbolts. It's not like it's a lock. So I, I would I'm almost gearing towards what Althea is t- saying that there's somebody inside. There. Yeah, then we need to let them out. That's fair. Let's let's then in that case I, I front door makes most sense. Let's use the opposite side of the house to go to the front. See if there's another door, windows. Yeah. So as you uh, walk along this side of the the other side of the house, as you're doing pretty much circumference of yeah. the whole house, as you're looking at it, there are. Seems to be like five windows, uh, main level. Oh shit! Um, along here, but they all seem to be. Now that you're like looking at them, they seem to be 
blacked out from the inside, so you can't see it. Mm. But they are windows. They're not open. No, but they are windows. Right. Now, if there was a victim in the house, why didn't they break out of the window? Um, Well, if they're chained. Uh, That's a good point. All right. Are we all in agreement? We're going to go in? Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. If you wanted that glass of water, now's a good chance we're going to be going to the front. No. No. Let's just do this. And I'm just going to spit. (laughs) <laughs> whatever vile stuff is in my mouth onto the I, ground. I, I pass her a handkerchief. <laughs> All right. Okay. Handkerchief it is a go-go. Yeah. So. So I open one deadbolt. Okay. So you open the one. So there's four of them. There's four. I open the first one. Yeah. Chunk, chunk. You slot it down and yeah. slide it across. Look back at everybody. Open the second deadbolt. Yep. Done. <laughs> While she's doing that, I have my Lee Enfield train on the door. And then before I open the next one, actually thinking about it, I'm going to do a listen check. Just to make sure there's nobody directly on the other side of the door. Ah! That's smart. Okay. Um, roll listen. See that drew attention? Ugh, 61 out of 33. Nah, you don't really hear anything out of the ordinary. Do the third one. It's a chunk. And look back at everybody. Okay, Can I ready? listen check after the third one? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, okay. okay, 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 okay. No. <laughs> 83 and into 60. The fourth deadbolt. Yeah. Ch- chunk. Yeah. How four deadbolts are gone? Open the door and step back so that I'm not immediately in the path of the door. Okay. Uh, so you open the door, and of course, Amos is there with his handgun, and Agatha is there with her Lee Enfield. And Althea is there with her rope. <laughs> you gotta have rope. Yeah, man. You know what you fucking need it for. You just always know you fucking need it. Yeah. Basically, exactly, right? um, there's a bit of a smell, like a moldy, mildewy type of smell emanates as you open the door. And as you look down, it seems to be just a hallway into the house, which a lot of these others are, with doors. Um, seems to be uh, three doors on the left hand side just spaced across for rooms and there's a double door just in a bit on the right and another door on the right hand side further down and it seems to be right and you can't really pick out it's really dark and it's also the faded like wallpaper Mm. that's curled you can see like black mold gross and stuff around (laughs) and it's the smell and you know water stains along the ceiling and it just, ugh. Everything Evil seems. Street, is that you? Everything seems soft. I don't know how else to put it. You know what yeah. I mean? If you touch yeah. the wall, you'd think the wall spongy. would be I ain't spongy touching and shit. soft. Um, and at the end, you can't really pick out at the end of the hallway, but it seems to like stop sort of abruptly. So you're assuming there's a turn. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. One door at a time, we work our way down. One door at a time. Yep. All right. Uh,. We should probably close each door as we check it. In case anyone goes in behind us, we can... Uh... Yeah, because basically there's five doorways in the hallway. Three on the left-hand side, two on the right-hand side is the easiest way to put it. Okay. Yeah, we should close each door as we check them. Okay. All right. Shall we prepare to move into the first door that's closest to us? It is a fairly small hallway as well. Right Single the file. Single file would probably be best, although you could fit like sideways. You know what I mean? All right. But it seems like it's not suffocating is the wrong word, but claustrophobic. claustrophobic. Yeah, there's really a claustrophobic element to this. Okay. First door, I guess. Mm. Same sort of thing. Oh. Which which door? Left hand, first door on the left hand side, or first door on the right? Are hand they side? E- equally close to us? Um, no. The left-hand side door is closer. Maybe the other one's only like a foot or two offset. The double door is a foot or two offset. The double door? Yeah, there's yeah. a double door Ooh. as well. Do right we want to do that one for No, to start. Let's, start. Let's go in order. Let's go in order. Closest one on the not double door. Left? Is that the left? Yeah, it's left. It's the left, yeah. Left. Okay. Okay, so it just seems to be in like a normal household door. You know what I mean? But um, you do notice that 
with like mildew or the moisture, it seems to have expanded. Oh. So as you reach to try to open it, it's sort of, you need to give it a whack okay. to get through it. It seems to be, you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, uh, it would expand. Uh, with yeah, expand it out into the door frame. Yeah, gross. Am I opening the door or, shall, or did you want to? Who has the crowbar? I have the crowbar. Well, I'm going to start by opening, <laughs> start by opening with the knob. <laughs> So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna open the door. Okay. Okay. So of course the doorknob doesn't. Yeah. You can't really open it. So you're gonna use the crowbar. Well, I thought I thought I could, if I could just put my shoulder behind it. I could oh yeah, it. you could try to push it. It's yeah. just a strength check. Okay. Yeah. Uh, forty-nine out of forty. Yeah. So you sort of hit it, and it's this soft Ugh. thing, and you know, like pieces of the the mold gets on your shoulder and stuff like that. That's like, ooh, but you don't manage to break the door open. It does make a bit of noise. Listen, Jake, does anything move after that? Mm-hmm. See if there's a, like footsteps upstairs or on our floor or something. 17 out of 63. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a hard, almost extreme. That would be nice. Yes. Um, you can put a tick next to listen. I'm not sure if you have it or not. I do. Um, and you... You can hear, it sounds like the house is creaking. You know the sound of a house settling? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as you hit it, it's almost this vibration that goes through, and it's just like this mm-hmm. weird sloppy movement sound you can hear. Uh, like footsteps. No, no yeah, footsteps. That you would know of. <laughs> All right. Let me try and kick it. Sure. You ready? Yep. All right. Let's do this. And with a solid boot. That's six, uh, 68 out of 65. Wow. <laughs> We're failing at this. Yeah, so uh, you, uh, but you sort of slip a little bit on the floor. There's a little bit of water on the floor from all the mildew. This and place so is disgusting. You hit more of the door <laughs> jam than anything else. Very regards. Can I use your crowbar? But yes, I hand it. To, I hand the crowbar to Agatha. That's I'm smart. I'm going to try to jab the crowbar into between the door and the door frame where the mm-hmm. lock is, mm-hmm. and see if I can maneuver it where it's popping it open or forcing it open or breaking the frame anyway. Okay, um, it's a it's a strength check still, but it is with advantage. Mm-hmm. With um, you get the extra percentile, and you take the better of the two results. Oh, well. Watch, I rolled the Better same for thing. you. <laughs> okay, well, that one. Uh, 42 out of 60. Oh, okay, yeah. So you jam it in there, and it's the sound, this crunching. That satisfactory soft, is going to break it. Yeah, but it doesn't break <laughs> like a normal wood. Yeah. It's sort of slimy as it just fucking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, as it just slides out and it, yes, I made that sound. <laughs> no, um, that was me. That was a thinking expression on my face more so than. As you pop it out of place, and it just, just that, and there's a black mold and stuff, and you, you know insects and stuff, and all along the door frame. As you look inside, and this first room it just seems to be like a storage room. Um, there's like boxes and stuff, but they're all wet and shaped in on themselves and there's mold across everything. You see what appears to be like a, uh, an old bicycle, oh. uh, missing its front tire and there's an old bicycle against, uh, the wall. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah, there just seems to be a pile of junk. You, ever, you know, just a pile of junk, a torn up carpet, uh, extra ro- rolls of the wallpaper that are all completely molded over and everything else, and just this bicycle that's in there that's missing its front tire up against the wall. But that's all you really see in here. Nothing more worth looking for into further, it looks like. Completely up to you. Um, Is it... It's just a, sm- it's a small room, like you can see all of it, basically? Yeah, it's just a small, it's like, like it's not... storage closet room. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. I I'll think close the door as well as we can and uh, go to the next Double one. doors. Double doors. <laughs> do they slide or do they push open? 
Um, they seem to want to push open, but I'm just going to finish up yeah. something here. Um, as uh, who's closing the door? Because it won't fully close again because mm -hmm. it's like warped. Yeah. But who's closing the door? Somebody's closing the door. I will. I'll take my crowbar back from Agatha. Okay. Um, so, Marion, just as you're like looking in and you can see all this stuff, just as you're about to close the door and you're looking over the bike and it's like, because of me being who you are, mm -hmm. you know, you like using bikes and stuff. Yep. You're like, oh, it seems like such a waste. It seems like such a nice silver bike. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Call. Our next episode will air Tuesday, February 11th. In the meantime, Tuesday, February 4th, is the next episode of Spacers, our Starfinder actual playcast. The game system used today is called Cthulhu 7th Edition by Chaosium. Music, sound effects, and ambient tracks licensed through Triune Films, Video Co. by the Dan Sirenscape. You can find all Twisted Gears Studios' podcasts on YouTube, Google Play, Apple Music, and Spotify. Please follow and like Twisted Gear Studios on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Twisted Gear. Your players are Dino, Janessa Coles, Lindsay Delansky, Zach Barrett, and Elizabeth Wells. Your audio operator was Rob Hickey, and your GM, or keeper, this evening was Derek Snow. If you happen to be in the Fort Murray area, you can find me at Tavern on Main every Monday at 7.30pm for trivia. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you next time.